Ingleside uh, Expansion Task Force. And uh, I'm glad to be here and, and help our community uh, make this project a success. Excellent. Um, uh, Com Bruce, do you want to go next? Hi, Bruce Sherman, I'm the commissioner for ANC for G02, the single member district where the project is taking place. I'm happy to be on the call tonight and I look forward to the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Nash, Jim? Uh, James Nash. I'm a uh, commissioner from single member district 03. And uh, I'm uh, glad to be here and do my best to let this task force uh, do its job. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Stephanie? Uh, yes, I'm Stephanie Nash, the president and CEO at the Episcopal Center, um, where the field also is located. And I'm so happy to be here. Did she call herself? President. I'm Jenny Backus. I'm the co-chair. If you came on and missed me, I live on Nebraska Avenue 5841, just down the road from Bruce, um, right across the street from the ECC and the field. Um, Trey? Yep, I'm Trey Holloway. I'm the assistant head of school for finance and operations at Murray. Excellent. And Johnny. Good evening, everyone. My name is Johnny Sakley. I'm the director of contracts and compliance at FBM Build. We're building the fields. Excellent. Um, well, I just wanted to um, thank everybody for joining and let you know that we are um, uh, taping this um, when we post the recording of the tape and a transcript of the chat up um, uh, on our special page on the ANC website. And Mike and I will do as, as the course of this conversation goes tonight, we'll be posting in the chat the links to our website, um, the links to the form that we ask folks to um, used to raise questions and, and highlight issues for um, us around the project and also um, uh, our email. So you can also email us directly. Um, we have a special ANC field task force email. So we will post all that in here. Our agenda for tonight is we're gonna um, quickly um, have uh, Trey and Johnny and Stephanie, uh, if you want to on your, just on your construction, even though it's not, like I said, in the remit of the task force, I've said that before, but it is, all on the same property. So if you have anything you want to update on us, we'd love that too. But we'll start off with Trey and Johnny with an update on what's going on. And then uh, Mike and I will summarize um, what we've been uh, hearing uh, through the the the, in, the community questions and complaint form. Um, and then we will open it up for questions from you guys. So you can post questions in the chat. Um, some of you um, on the RSVP form have questions. Um, although there weren't as many this time, and I will also, we also have the comments from the um, complaint form. So we will definitely, and then we will do a summary um, that will include all of this information when we send it out for community update. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Trey. Terrific. Thank you. Um, it's okay. Wanna, one second. Do you want to share screen? Because I will give you the power. Yes. That's what I was going to okay. do. Yeah. Okay security it's not share i want to get out of that sorry keep going try sorry okay. and then um johnny we didn't talk about this ahead of time i think last time you went, did the report do you want to do the report are you cut you good that sure yeah I okay can, I, I can run through the updates yep i'll share it. and then like last time i'll be um i'll try to let you kind of do the report and then i can jump in with um because we did the, the rhythm for the report is that we submitted it last week, but there's more things that have happened since last week. And so I can fill in some of that information um, as well. Excellent. Yep. So looking uh, looking back at what was done, we, we've completed the tree removal process uh, of the uh, trees uh, identified in, in the permits. Uh, we've completed the mulching activities uh, and placing the access roads uh, for the transplant vehicle traffic. Uh, the tree transplant crews uh, began to mobilize and, and create the, uh, the protective barriers around the, uh, the, the trees that are slated to be moved. Um, we applied for the uh, permit for the uh, uh, entrance to the driveway to access the uh, project site. And in our look ahead, we, we were hoping to receive it. And I believe that permit came in yesterday. I believe I heard from my team. Uh, so, so that that went through. 
uh, we trenched out the four uh, heritage trees in, in preparation of the transplant, and that's protecting the, the root balls underneath them. And uh, we continue to have uh, uh, site visits from uh, both myself and our uh, site safety uh, supervisor. Uh, so looking ahead, uh, the first thing that, that we have there, that, that's already been received. Uh, so we'll complete the hauling off of spoils from the tree removal process. Uh, I believe the, the tree removal equipment that was on site has already been demobilized. Um, additional tree transplant crews will be uh, coming to site this week. Um, and um, so the transplant process has begun. Uh, so we've, we've basically dug out further trenches that the trees will basically, that's the path they'll take out of their, their current uh, resting spot. Um, and have protected well, yeah, those like all, like, speak in detail, but people can okay. see that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and so, yeah, so uh, in the next couple of days, uh, I, I believe actually early next week, they'll start piling the uh, pipes for the uh, tree transplant. That is going to cause a little bit of noise, uh, but that's, that's just part of the process. Um, and then once the piping is stalled under the root balls, the first two trees will be moved and then the same process will be followed for trees uh, three and four. Um, and then at the end, we'll just regrade, um, install the irrigation and, and mulch and demobilize the equipment. And uh, from last week, we had a couple of complaints related to the mulching, just in terms of uh, the, the sound and the uh, the, the dust that was generated from uh, one of the mulchers. And as soon as that, that came in uh, through the uh, task force email, uh, we were able to mobilize, uh, get the mulcher removed. And uh, we paid a visit to, to, to the neighbor in question as well uh, to explain what we, had, uh, what we had done. Thanks, Johnny. And um, I'll fill in a few more things that have, you know, since we finalized this report a week ago, um, as Johnny noted, we did receive that construction entrance permit. It actually it came in Friday. Um, and then we had our signage and everything, and we started the, the delivery of the equipment yesterday. Um, so specifically, there was the piping that Johnny mentioned, and then a, a, a much larger um, trenching machine to dig the trenches for the trees. So they, I was actually on the site today, and they've started digging those trenches. And essentially what they do is they dig a big ramp um, around the root ball of the tree. And so they can get the tree out of its location um, and move it to its new location. And um, we did send an email to the, the neighbors that are closest to the first tree that we're going to transplant. So the east side of the site is the um, portion of the property that's closest to 28th Street. They're going to start on the heritage tree on that side of the property. And so earlier this week, we sent uh, an email to the those neighbors that are there abutting the property, letting them know about the start of that work and the, um, specifically because of the noise um, with getting that piping installed to provide that structural support for the trees during their move. Um, so that'll start in the coming days with like the noise from from that work. Um, so that, I think those are the kind of the main details that I wanted to fill in. Um, at this point, I don't know which tree they will do uh, next. I just know that that one's first. And that from our conversations this afternoon, they think it's going to be, they're going to spend probably two and a half days prepping that tree um, after they get the, the uh, ramp dug. And then they'll, they probably will lift it out of its home on uh, Tuesday to start moving it to its new home. Um, yeah, I think, I think that is our, um, kind of our update. I do, there are some pictures, so that's our permit board, pretty standard. Um, this is a picture of the, the mulch pathways that we noted. So we, you see the, the tire treads there. We are trying to use those. I know there was a question at some point from someone about, you know, why are we mulching all the stuff on site? The idea was to reuse the trees that were cut down to make these mulch pathways so that we make as few um, kind of trenches as possible on the site from the- I, I like your Easter picture. <laughs> so 
that's how we move the equipment around on the site to the extent possible. We still have a big pile of mulch that we um, may use in some other places as well. So that's it for us, Jenny. Okay. Um, does anybody on the task force, Mike, uh, Bruce, or Jim, have any questions about that before we move to Stephanie? I'll then go through some of the um, and and Johnny and Trey both have references, but I'll just for the good of the of the community and and the public, I'll go through some of the um, concerns that we got in on the complaint form, and then um, we've got one or two questions that just came in via chat and via the RSVP form. I yeah. have a question. Okay, mommy. Um, my question is: um, Do you like the beauty for in um in Washington D.C. the cherry blossoms by the tidal basin? Okay, sorry about that. Um, uh, Bruce, do you want to go first? Or Jim, actually went to Bruce last time. Bruce, Jim, do you have any questions? I had one question. I noticed that there's irrigation for the transplanted trees. Is there irrigation for every single transplanted tree? Yes, there will be. And so there will be um, irrigation that will go to all of the transplanted trees. So that they get the water that they need when they get into their new location. And right now they're they're hand watering the, the like the tree that they're trenching out and all the trees are hand watering them with a hose right now. And irrigation for you, there also are new trees in this project, right? There will be, yes, eventually. Will they be will they receive irrigation also? I don't know. Um the answer to to that at this point. Um I suppose it may depend on what we select and what the kind of like what our landscape folks recommend. I don't know the answer to that right now. Bruce, do you want to go? And then there's a good, couple of really good questions in the chat too. Yeah, and well, Jenny, wherever you think it's appropriate to um, mention um, kind of a variety of issues that have come up since our last meeting. I don't, it's not specifically related to the transplanting of the trees right now. So wherever you think it fits, you can let me know. Why don't we do, why don't we open, why don't we go through the specific tree questions that are in the chat um, and then go to those issues. And then there's a question that's kind of general on the, on the RSVP form that may relate also to what you're going to ask, Bruce. Sure, um, sure. Okay. So let me just do the tree questions right now in the chat. Um, and Mike, tell me if I miss anybody, but um, Rachel Feichter asked, is there an arborist overseeing the transplant? Is he, she, they on site every day? So there is an arborist that's overseeing the transplant um, that we've contracted with. They are not on the site every day. I will say the folks that are doing this transplant are um, really experienced. This is all they do. They just came from Jacksonville, Florida, where they moved um, several, three large trees. Um, they were telling me today, not just on the site, but they moved, they put them on a truck and move them somewhere else. So the firm is very experienced. I will also say um, not just the contractor that we hired, um, EDI, they also have arborists on staff. I, mean, I don't think any of the guys that we're working today are arborists, but we do have periodic visits from our arborists. Um, and we do have a, a transplant plan that they follow, right? So you have the transplant plan. It's um, it's similar, to, I'd say, you know, you're building a house and you have an architect draw up your plans and your contractor follows the plans, right? Um, the architect may not be at this home at the job site every day when they're building the house, but they do need to check in. And um, I think you guys have a link to EDI um, on your on your website, but if not, we can. There's a couple people that have questions about the company and like what they what their experience is, and and um, so we'll make sure that we 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 cross link to that. I think you guys had that on your website. I may be, maybe I'm just misremembering or just remembering a presentation, but we can get the contact information. I think you also had a video of them moving a, a, a tree that you showed at an earlier meeting too. I think we did um, a video at an earlier meeting. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember if I'll we linked to their can, site. But. I'll see if I can find it and I'll put it in the chat um, or we'll send it out afterwards. Um, there's a question from Elaine Collier. Will trees 
moved and plant, will trees, I think it's be moved and planted on the same day, just curious about the process. Uh, no, they'll, it, it takes some time to move them is my understanding. So it may take a day or two to get it out of its current home and then into the next home. The, the process, essentially they blow up these, uh, they're like, they're shaped like a hot dog, but much, much bigger balloons and they inflate them underneath the tree and they use those to roll the tree along and so it's just a, it's a slow process to move them and is it one system for all the trees is is another question uh one irrigation system i think that's yeah. what it'll be i mean that's what we did before so when we pruned the roots of the trees a, a year ago or so this time we installed uh a uh, drip irrigation system, one for all of the trees. And so you kind of, your, um, the arborist that we've hired tells us the trees need, you know, X number of gallons of water per day. They stick a moisture meter in the ground and they monitor the moisture. And I had an app on my phone and so did other people. So you can kind of monitor it real time and make sure the trees are getting the amount of water that they're supposed to have. And then you can adjust the irrigation system based on what the moisture meter is telling you. Make sure you're not overwatering them or underwatering them. Great. Um, I think that's the end on the tree questions. Mike, I've skipped you. I'm sorry, fellow co-chair. Um, do you have any questions about trees? No, I don't have any questions about the trees. Okay. I'm gonna go through then and then Bruce, I'll go to you afterwards, but I'm just gonna summarize what has come in um, to date so folks know. Um, uh, since our last meeting um, on the complaint form. And then we had, there's a question in the chat that also I had gotten earlier from Claudia Russell. Um, so I think the first, um, let's see, I'm opening this up. Uh, the, we had a, a concern um, raised about the dust that, that was produced from the mulch. Um, uh, Johnny Sackley talked about that a little bit. Um, uh, the the, the team moved um, the, the equipment and the mulching kind of away from the road and from places where it was creating the dust and moved it backwards. But uh, there was a, a period of time where that was happening and we we had a response. I think there was meetings with, uh, um, with uh, the affected person. And um, that I think is a good example of the process working. Hopefully it didn't work, it worked pretty quickly. I think we can keep working on response time, but as soon as I told um, uh, the team, people did uh, reach out right away. Um, so that was a sawdust covering my car and doorway. Um, there uh, was some definite concerns about work starting earlier in the morning, um, uh, which were raised um, with chainsawing. We, the team uh, reacted to that and, and agreed not to start before 9 a.m. Uh, uh, in parts of the property that are adjacent to where neighbors are. Um, I'm trying to look at the date up to our last meeting. Those are the, those are the comments that have uh, come in to um, date. There was one other question that came in on the 24th that wants to know, had questions about whether the fields would be accessible to neighbors and how that was gonna work um, and when the work was expected to be completed. And we sent her information um, from the ANC site, from the Moray site, um, the, and information about the memorandum of understanding in terms of use, which is not in our direct purview, but we're happy to share that information. So those are the three questions that came in on the um, on the on the complaint form, and they were all addressed. And if there's still issues out there, we're absolutely happy to go back. I'm not trying to imply that they're all necessarily closed, but they're but but we we know about them, and and all the right people know about them. Um, I got a new question today, and there's a quote. It's also in the chat about idling trucks. Um, that trucks were idling. Um, there were two trucks today, and I'm sorry, I, I just saw the email right now, or I would have told um, Trey and Johnny. But there's a three minute idling. I'm going to read Ann Sutherland's question, but it, the same question came in from Claudia Russell on the um, on the ANC email. There's a three minute idling rule in DC. The crew this morning clearly violated that. Is the crew properly instructed about DC regulations? Uh, uh, that to yeah, so Johnny, maybe you can help me a little bit on this. I would say um, if, they if, they, if they did more than that, then 
it's probably worth a friendly reminder to them and we can certainly give them that um, to let them know. Yes. Yeah, we'll definitely follow up with those contractors before uh, any contractor mobilizes to site. We do have mobilization meetings with them explaining the rules for the site, just kind of the expectations around the site. And uh, I, I'm also, this is the first time I'm, I'm learning of this this morning, uh, but we'll, I'll double back with my superintendents tomorrow morning to just uh, re, reissue that instruction or that direction. Thank you. Okay, and then there's one more, Bruce, and I'll go to you, but I wanna read a question that came in um, on uh, our RSVP form for tonight's meeting. Um, uh, I will read it, it verbatim per the request of the questioner. Um, please this time read my questions, including the introductory statements without editing them or offering commentary, even if you think the issues are moot. My brief and respectful introductory statements provide context without which I am unlikely to receive a complete response to the questions. Number one, for ECC Moray and Task Force, the combined major construction at the corner of Nebraska and Utah and the extensive tree eradication have resulted in unprecedented deep mud puddles and flooding at the crosswalk. What steps are being taken to mitigate this problem at this intersection going forward? And then the second question is, for ECC Moraine Task Force, since the tree eradication, the field has become an eyesore. In the absence of formal BZA approval to continue with construction, what steps are being taken to restore the appearance of the field and prevent further erosion and flooding? So um, maybe, Trey, do you want to take a stab at the first one? And Stephanie, too, I think because at the corner of, um, uh, I think, Stephanie, you did address, we had some questions and concerns about mud um, at our last meeting that you had addressed uh, at the Nebraska Alley, but maybe, um, you guys want to take a stab at that one? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to go first. Um, so in terms of, you know, restoring the site, I, you know, I will point folks back to our BZA application and um, our renderings that we included in that, um, as well as the uh, drawings that were drawn up by our landscape uh, architect that, with that, that went with that submission that um, discuss our plans for the site once um, we're able to install new plantings. Um, we, we are actively working with our landscape designer on the plans to figure out, you know, what kind of things we can plant and timing for planting those items as well. So we do have plans for that. I would say I can't give you an exact time of when we're going to do that. Um, so you know, if, if that's what you're looking for, unfortunately, I don't have that at this time, but we do have plans to, to do that. Well, also, um, Johnny mentioned uh, stabilization. So essentially what that means is, you know, any dirt that we disturb, um, which is we are permitted to do, um, we will put that dirt back and cover it with straw and grass seed and, and get grass back there. So, you know, if it takes time to get the written BZA order or it takes time to get the permits, we are going to be putting, you know, grass back in the areas where there's currently mud. So that is um, one of the main mitigation um, pieces for for us. We also have installed lots of super silt fencing and silt fencing um, along the property to deal with any um, mud or runoff that may happen um, on the project. So I think that that's the answer from the the Murray side. And, and I was actually. One last thing, um, you know, we do have a tight handshake with DOEE once we finish the transplant. So they will come back and DOE is the Department of Energy and Environment who they um, have purview over runoff in the city. They will come back and make sure that we've done everything correctly to mitigate um, runoff concerns. Thank you. Stephanie, do you have anything you wanna to add to that? You're on mute, Stephanie. I may have misheard, but I think I heard you say that it was Nebraska and Utah, and there's the second uh, driveway 
coming out from the like circular, almost semicircular mm -hmm. driveway of ECC. So I'm not sure if that's the area. That's the area closest to the stormwater uh, bioretention uh, structure that's also there. So if I'm hearing the question correctly, I know that similarly to Murray, we are working with Wetland Solutions um, which is an off branch of Davy Tree that has in, been involved in terms of soil disturbance and some of the very things that Trey also mentioned to help mitigate around that, whether it was uh, matting, there's uh, straw slash hay in certain areas also, as well as the silk matting that you mentioned, Trey. But I'd wanna know more because I know we had addressed this once and if it's been continuing, I'd wanna know that so I can let the site supervisor know. Um, I know we haven't had any rain lately, so we might not have, you know, for a while, we might not have seen the extent of what this um, concern was, but I sure want to loop back, and I don't know if it's in the chat. I don't, is that something that I will, was uh, I will, um, yeah, I, that came in on the RSVP form, so it might have been from a couple of weeks ago, because we put that RSVP form okay. out there, so it might have been when the rain was. I'll put the whole question okay. in the chat, so we have a record of it. And I'll that get would, you the name of the person who submitted it too. So you can directly respond, but it looks like it, they were talking about the crosswalk at Nebraska and Utah. Yeah, so, I think that has been addressed, but I certainly, you know, this is something it's iterative, you know, it could change or I know we're expecting some rain over the weekend. So, and that's another thing too, making sure that when the site, um, when folks leave on Friday for the weekend, that all of that has been in place. There's also been hay up on top of the hill. There's the whole area that soil compaction had to be addressed. So um, I, I guess that's, that's all I know for right now, but I'd like to hear more if there is more. Sure. And I'll and I can connect you, uh, you and Trey on that too. Okay. Thank you. I think Mike is. I think that's the end of the questions that have come in on chat. And yes, um, I don't see any other questions on the chat. Okay, so I'll turn it over to Bruce now. I was saying, there was Jenny. I think Ann Sutherland did ask if anyone from EDI is on the call. Oh, I'm um, sorry, Ann. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. There, and there's not. No, it's just it's myself and then Johnny from MCN Build. Okay, there is a, a turf question that we can go to afterwards because Bruce has been patiently waiting. So we will go to that question afterwards. Uh, no, no worries. Um, three things that I have. The first is that I think uh, today one of the trucks, um, Jenny, might have backed into the wall by Celeste Regan and Sam Smith's house. There's a, a, a newly cracked corner there of the wall and the stone. Uh, you could probably walk out of your house and take a quick look at that. I, I've got a picture of it, but uh, that's one thing. Um, secondly, I am not, I'm up in Vermont, so thank you for telling me that. I'll have Ed go on and, and check it out, but thank you, Bruce. Okay. Um, secondly, and I think we want to note this now so that it doesn't become something that lingers and then someone wonders how it happened and so forth. It seems to be a fresh item. Secondly, um, Trey, I know uh, a number of neighbors were, or at least a, a neighbor or two, we're in touch with you about use of the alleys and the alleys behind the Rittenhouse alleys and the Utah alleys about any construction related um, activity. I got questions from folks on Utah, Rittenhouse and 28th Street about this over the last, uh, whatever, 10 days or so. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it would be helpful if you just wanted to review that for everybody about the policy on the alleys. Yeah, so in our um, agreement and conditions that we set forth with the ANC. Um, we negotiated that we'd be able to use the alleys for heritage tree transplant. So that's the current phase that we're in. Um, planting of uh, new um, vegetation and trees that would be along that alleyway or, or building retaining walls that we will need around the perimeter of the property. So those are the three things where we can use it um, per the agreement with, with the ANC. Now, separate and apart from that is um, I would say DDOT being okay with us doing that, you know, um, DDOT has an opinion on whether or not and when and how they want us to use the alley and which vehicles. So we kind of have to deal with that separately. So, you know, in our mind, we kind of say, okay, like this is what we agreed to with the neighborhood. And then, um, DDOT has their, um, their rules that you, they want you to follow, um, when utilizing a public alley. Right. So for those who don't know, the alleys on uh, Rittenhouse, behind Rittenhouse Street and Utah Avenue were reconstructed a few years ago. 
uh, to aid in water runoff and water absorption. So they're a particular kind of alley, meaning they're not solid concrete. Uh, they're not fragile in the sense that there are garbage trucks who come down those alleys and collect garbage, but heavy equipment and so forth could disturb the, the alley. So there was concern about the heavy equipment on, on the alleys. And I believe um, one of the neighbors has reached out to DDOT and has uh, uh, contacted DDOT, who's going to be taking a look at the alleys and reviewing any covenants related to the alleys. So um, just be mindful of that, that the alleys are new, relatively newly reconstructed and their concerns about uh, disturbing the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the structures of the, uh, of the structure of the alleys. Um, and then finally, we had a bit of email uh, crosstalk regarding concerns that neighbors raise now that do not fall within the remit of the task force per se. Jenny, you and Mike remember, I think, some of that uh, conversation about whom people are to be in touch with uh, about some of these things. So I don't know that we have a clear policy on that. I would just say that if it's, um, I mean, I'm always happy to help. Obviously, I'm a commissioner for the district. So if someone raises an issue, I will certainly, if it's related to the task force work, let you guys know about it. Um, and on the particular issue regarding the alleys, that's not a task force issue per se, but I'm raising it now, just letting you know that someone had expressed a concern about use of the alleys. So I'll keep you posted on things that I hear that are not squarely within the remit, as I understand it, of the task force, but are related to what's happening more broadly, just so that you have visibility on it and, and are aware of it. And then we can sort out you know, how to address it and handle it so that uh, neighbor concerns can get addressed in the most effective way possible, if that all makes sense. Yeah, and I think probably this is a conversation we probably want to have um, with the task force and ANC, um, because I did flag some of that for, I saw that, Bruce, and first of all, I appreciate you sharing all this. Um, this is really helpful. I think uh, Lisa Lisa said to me that the she, even though it's not quote unquote officially in the remit, the 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 the, the reporting forms, the the regularity of the meetings, the public transcripts, the report outs. She wants concerns that the neighbors are having to come through us. We we don't have power to levy fines. We've had lots of conversations in lots of uh, venues, but our most important job, I think, is the convening job and the, sh the sharing of the information back to the construction teams and to the ECC. So um, I I think we can look a little bit more inside the process part of it. Um, but I think the public should know that this organization, every single question that's come up, the, the number one thing that we all have on the task force, you too, is like, how do we get an answer to this? And does everybody know about it? And can we get this fixed for a neighbor quickly? Or can we raise this issue so it's something that the construction teams and the ECC can plan for in the future? So I think we can, um, we should probably have a, like more of a process conversation about that. And uh, Jim, I'd be interested in and hearing what you said too, I mean, uh, I think the the feeling is that we, we should be collecting and keeping and publicly putting out the questions that are coming in, and um, and then working um, to make sure that we get the right answers. Because I think having one clearinghouse is really effective. I just want to quickly go back to the alleys too, just to confirm we ha you guys didn't are you you're not using the alleys right now, Trey? Right, the equipment's coming in through Nebraska. I just want to make sure that that question is cleared up because. I'm glad that Bruce flagged it because I knew it was a concern. I saw some of those same questions on the listserv. Yep, that's correct. I do expect that we will probably use it in the future um, for certain activities, but yeah, that we are not using it right now. And guys, whatever and comes up, sorry, sorry, Jenny, go ahead. But what I was just going to say is um, this is actually goes for the task force. It goes for Murray, it goes for Johnny, it goes for the ECC. The more heads up that we can get, and then the more heads up that we can give to people who are sort of in the direct impact zone of whatever's going to be happening is really helpful. The best thing is that we have Bruce across the street and me down the road. Like, so there's two people on this task force that literally have eyes on that site 24 seven, but, but I, but there are other people when things are happening. And I know that you guys have started to do that and gone to visit neighbors when there's been problems and try to get ahead of them. So the more that we can give each other heads up of when stuff is coming. And I think the report is really good in that sense. I, I we don't want to make you do it every day, but um, I just think the more community, I always think it's probably the best for us to err on the more transparency and the more communication, the better is what I would say. Sorry, Bruce, go ahead. 
No, no, no. I was just going to say that it, w whatever comes of the um, uh, the D dot, um, I think I think D dot Joel Berg is the is the D dot representative that works in our area. We're working with her on a project at Thirty Second in Utah and Tennyson in Utah currently on the reconstruction of that intersection. Uh, so she's the person that uh, one of the neighbors reached out to about the alleys, and she is going to be visiting um, the alleys. And, and Johnny, you may know about this. Um, okay, maybe, maybe some of the neighbors have reached out to you too. I'm not. I'm not sure. But in any event, um, Jenny, I'll keep you posted on what what I hear about um, any further information concerning use of the alleys. Yeah, that'd be helpful. That'd be really helpful, Bruce, because it you know it is um, it's a it's a we it, it, internally we refer to it as a special alley, like we understand that, right? But it's still a public alley, and so some of the uh, like our traffic folks are were admittedly a little confused about DDOT's hesitancy on the one hand, right? Like a public alley, typically you can, um, it's a public alley, right? If you're not, you know, parking your truck there, or putting construction materials there, you can typically drive down. I imagine neighbors probably have, you know, a new dishwasher dropped off behind their house or something like that. In our mind, that's kind of how we envision that space. So, um, but I'd certainly, on the other hand, understand DDOT's hesitancy with heavy equipment on, on that, even though there are garbage trucks that drive through there. You know, we, we want to do our best to collaborate with DDOT on that. So any information, and I may reach out to you to ask for that person at DDOT's contact information just for, so we can have help navigating and, and doing it in a way that DDOT feels comfortable with. No, I'll, I'll send you the contact information as uh, Joelle Burgard. I'll send that to you after the call here is over. Um, she's, um, uh, you know, very uh, cooperative and, and, and friendly in ways that I've been working with her again on another part of uh, our, our single member district, another construct, another project. So in any event, I'll, I'll keep you posted on that. I just wanted to bring it up. And I know, again, various neighbors that asked me about the alleys and I and again, it's because they were just recently reconstructed with a special approach to handle the, the water uh, runoff issues. So that, that's it, Jenny, thanks. That's great. And then the only other favor I ask all of us, and, I, and I've been guilty of this too, is Eve, if someone hasn't filled out the, um, the, the, the complaint form or the question form, and you get a phone call, if you can just like jot a few things down and just send it to the task force. I'm just trying to keep a written record of everything that comes in with concerns. I think it's helpful for us to prevent stuff from going forward. And like, also just to know, I think it really helps Johnny and Trey, especially Johnny um, too. Um, Jim, I, I called on you and then I didn't call on you. Do you have anything that you want to add in? I see Merrick Gutman, our other commissioner has joined. Um, Merrick, we're in the question and answer period right now. Jennifer, were you, did you, were you talking to me? Yeah. Oh, Is there no, anything? I, no, I, I, I did not. I did not have another question. No. Okay. Um, so I think there's two other questions that have come in um, into the, into the chat. And then um, if there's anything else, I just have a couple of date questions, Trey, I want to come back to you on in a second. Um, but let me do uh, Ann Sutherland, I'm going to go reverse order. How is that from Ann Sutherland? How exactly is EDI supervising their contract workers if they are not on site day to day? So um, I should I should clarify. So, and I apologize. I'm going to use some acronyms. So, EDI is the are the folks that we've contracted with to move the trees. Like they're the ones who. Um, they do all the things around the tree transplant. So they're the ones who trim the roots last um, spring, trim the tree canopies. They're the ones who dug the trenches around the trees. They install the poles. They do the hot dog shaped balloons. They move them to their new home. They, they do all of those pieces. Um, and then they have the people that own that are arborists and they have arborists on site as well. And then they have people that are their employees, their EDI employees. Okay. Well, at least we'll have it. So, so, I'll just put it in the okay. so they're the their EDI EDI employees are the ones who are on the site each day doing the work. Separately, we have a company called WSSI, Wetland Solutions and Studies, Wetland Studies and Solutions. They're the arborists that we hired, and they are the ones who are not there every day, 
but they come periodically to check on the work. Okay, that's great. Sorry, I've gone off because the Vermont internet is not very strong. So I've gone off picture for a second. Um, the second question is a question um, about um, turf. Um, and um, I will read it. Um, it's from uh, Ra Rachel Thector. Um, Trey is Murray. Apologies if I said your name wrong. Um, Trey is Murray wedded to the use of AstroTurf. Is Murray awake? I think it's aware of the long term effects of using it. Yeah. Um, so I will say that we continue to believe that a synthetic turf field is the best product for our needs and use on the site, right? Like if we're going to play the sports on the site that we need to play, we continue to believe that that's the, the best surface. We won't be able to achieve that with a Bermuda grass or a zoysia grass, something like that. We also continue to believe that and know that we're going to select the best product that's out there. One of the things we've said, and so I apologize if you've heard me say it before, is that we are going to do a lot of research. Um, we've already done a lot of research and we're going to select the, the best product that's available on the market. So Marjo Talbot, our head of school, has given this example before, but when we redid the, our field um, behind this, the school in Woodley Park, at the last minute, there was um, a wood infill that came on the market. We selected that over the rubber crumb stuff because that was just better environmentally. The last point that I will, um, I will make on this is that we really care about our kids that play on the site. You know, um, we care about them and their well being and their health. And so, you know, that is like our priority, you know, number one. And so, for that reason alone, we are going to do the best we can in terms of product selection. And I think obviously this is a conversation that you'll we'll keep having. So Trey, we may ask you to update on this as we you know go through the process once construction starts too, because uh, I'm sure we're going to keep doing research. J Jenny, can I uh, just make a quick comment on on this? Sure. Um, I think um, whether it falls within the purview of the task force or within the ANC, the um, and, and consistent with building out the fields. This isn't a question of whether you build the field or not build the field. It's a question of how you build the field, which is what this task force is about. Um, the, the question related to natural versus artificial turf, I think it's fair to say is going to be a question that the community wants to ask and get a lot more answers on. Trey, you're sensitive to this, I know, because there have been lots of questions and comments over the last year about this. This is obviously not a new matter. But the recent and ongoing discoveries about PFAS, not in the infill material, whether it's crumb rubber or uh, crushed coconut shells or wood or what have you, but the plastic blades and the presence of PFAS in any form of plastic um, with the potential deleterious water runoff and other effects um, is something that I know the community is going to have a lot of questions and concerns about going forward. So we don't need to talk about it now. I just want to acknowledge that this is going to be a major issue that either the task force and or the ANC as a whole needs to grapple with and hear the community out on because as you, I think can imagine there are lots of concerns about it. That was a, a good paraphrase, Rachel. Um, I Bruce paraphrased, I think, the comment that you had in in in. I mean, not, excuse me, the question and comment that you had in the chat. So, um, I wrote that down as something that we should talk about, looking at in the future. I um, and um, that's I, I have it on the list. Absolutely, um, thank you. Is something that we should keep keep the conversation going about. Um, okay. Anything else? Uh, any uh, any other questions? I have a just a, I have three questions that I wrote down during this um, and probably because I was trying to let people in and do the recording. Do we have a timeline on when we, and it doesn't have to be exact. And I'm, I'm, I completely watching the weather these days. It, you know, it's sunny, it's snowing, it's rainy, it's windy in within 48 hours. But um, do we roughly know when we think the tree transplant will be finished? Yeah. I mean, right now it's a roughly end of April. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then another question that came up earlier, because I think I asked about, this was a, a question from last time. 
you guys are working with a DC arborist too, right? I think I remember that from the first, is a DC arborist kind of looped in on all of this too, Trey? Yes. Yep. He is. Um, Ranji um, is, you know, involved at the appropriate level, I would say. I, I don't know how frequently he goes to the site or how often he makes a call, but I know, I mean, he's very aware. I haven't spoken to him in probably three weeks, but I spoke to him before we kind of got started as we finished the removal and we're looking at ramping up on the transplant. He and I spoke on the phone. He's very aware of what we're doing, has reviewed all of the plans and everything. So. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, I think that is it. The last thing I would just say is um, please uh, continue to reach out to the community. You had, you guys have great questions. Um, and I want to thank the Johnny and Trey and the, and the team and Stephanie, your team on site for, for being willing to answer questions and talk to people as soon as we hear if there are issues um, that are coming up. Um, uh, I think, and we'll try to share as much information as we can in between. Mike's been doing an outstanding job keeping the listserv up to date and many other things he's doing an outstanding job at. But um, uh, we, he and I will try to continue to share that information with folks. And it, like I said, if you do have a question and you don't feel like filling out a form, you can send us an email and I'll, I'll, I'll log it so that we can just keep, keep a record of everything um, that's happening. Please reach out. Um, and I, I'd have as action items, Johnny, for you and Trey, that take a look at um, Sam and Celeste's house, which is uh, right next door to Bruce's on the way towards my house, um, the wall in front of there. Um, if you guys could take a look at that tomorrow. Um, we're going to keep the issue of turf. What's, in the, what's the house day. number on that, Jenny? I, is it, I don't, I'm so embarrassed to say, is it 37, Bruce? I don't know, 5837. Uh, you're on mute, I think. He's Bruce, looking at. Me. Yeah, if I'm five eight four one, and then it's not the house next door to me; it's the house after that, almost like directly across from the alley from the Nebraska entrance. Not Bruce's house, but the one closer to me. I can't believe I don't have Sam's less address, <laughs> but they just live down the street. Um, I'll send it to you, Trey. Okay. I have on Nebraska it. Avenue, Jenny. It, it, it's, Trey, it's, five, eight, it's five eight three three. Three three. Okay. okay. Yeah, because three seven is Mary and David's old house. Okay. Yep, that makes sense. Um, okay. So, anything else? Yeah, I have. I have one question for for Johnny. Uh, uh, most construction projects run into surprises and delays and so on. Have you have you encountered any of those so far? Yeah. Uh, so far, no, not on this project. And you know, that's one of things we do with our pre-construction department will tend to investigate we promise no surprises to our clients really? so we, we try to do our best up front to, to avoid those wow um, i'll have to okay. hire you <laughs> <laughs> all right we have two more questions that have come in and we still have eight minutes so i'm going to quickly hit them uh, on my to-do list I'm sorry the other thing i wanted to quickly say is i do have making sure that johnny follows up with his drivers and does a friendly reminder about the idling too um Okay, Judy Lick has a question. One question. If the alley work was to offset runoff problems, how does the removal of trees impact that effort? So if I think I'm understanding this question correctly, the, the non-usage of the alley, um, that wasn't related to runoff issues. That alley was constructed to assist with runoff issues. And so I think DDOT had some concerns Oh, okay. Judy's saying no, not that. Yeah. Jenny, yeah. Jenny, I don't know if you can activate Judy so she can just ask the question herself. Yeah, she should be activated. Everybody's activated. I've just been uh, taking oh, okay. the sound off. I'll oh, take okay. the sound off. I've been taking most people's sound off if if they just have background noise. <laughs> um, I'm asking Judy to unmute right now. Okay, if the alley work, which was very extensive and took a long time and cost a lot of money, was as was to make to solve runoff problems, what kind of runoff impact are you going to have without the trees that were filtering water on the field? Because really, I think the runoff issue. I mean, we've spent so many much taxpayer money on. If you go down my block, 
There's no parking space in front of several houses because they were they worked on runoff for so long. And now this huge field with these trees that filtered the runoff is gone. So what impact does that have on the community? Thanks, Judy. So um, I'm not sure if your question is long-term or, or short-term kind of in nature. I'll answer the long-term one in that we're going to build a pretty extensive water capture system. If you live, if you live there and anywhere near there, you're not long-term or short-term. It's still a huge issue. I agree. And um, it's been, a, it, it was one of the first issues that we talked a lot about with our engineer was, you know, what is this system that goes underneath the field in order to capture the water and direct it into the, into the right places where it's supposed to go. And so um, our engineers worked hard on an underground filtration capture system to collect that water and to direct it into the storm water runoff pipes that they're supposed to go. I actually, I didn't go into all the details, but I just spoke with him about it probably three weeks ago, talking about you know how that's all looking and coming along. So it's at the top of our priority list to understand and make sure that that's happening the right way. Maybe that's a conversation we can like go into more depth and show people when we're, again, closer to that moment in time to try. Yeah, I mean, I, what I'll say is too, like the, and, I, and we said this before, and I know it didn't satisfy some people, so it's unlikely to satisfy tonight. I'll, I will grant you that. But what I will say is that the district has standards as it relates to stormwater runoff and what you're required to do when you do a construction project. And we are fully committed to meeting those standards that the district lays out. Um, individuals may have problems with those standards. I understand that, but we're going to build to those standards because it's what the, the city has done. The, the people who really are the experts, like I'm not the expert on that. And there may be someone on this call who is, but the people that do this work for the department of energy and, and environment for the city, like they're the experts and we're going to, we're going to do what they tell us to do. I promise you that they won't let us not do it. So that's, that's our, that's our plan. That's our intention. That's what we're going to do. So um, the, the idea that we would be some rogue entity is, is not true. The, the requirements that will be placed upon us from DOEE and throughout this process will be, um, they will be something that meets the standards of the district and are part of the district's plan for managing stormwater runoff. Another just quick question that I had is, didn't you also say that you guys were leaving the stumps in um, as well from the trees that came down before construction starts to help a little bit on the waterfront too, or to hold the soil? Maybe not on the yes. water, but soil. Yeah. And now that we have the ability to get equipment on the site, we can also do take kind of other measures as well. There are some stumps we have to take out. We can backfill those with dirt because we have a backfiller now, cover those, um, plant grass there until we're able to get in there and build our filtration system. But yeah, that is that is what we're going to do. Um, like there's some places where there are stumps where the trees have to go now, right? So you gotta take those stumps out, put the new tree in, backfill with dirt, seed it, that kind of grass seed it. Um, so yes, Jenny. And then the other so, question- that's a, It's a balance, right? Like right. I know somebody asked earlier or said earlier, it's an eyesore. And then someone says, you know, that you know, our answer for some of the runoff stuff is to leave the stumps, right? We're trying to balance here and we're not going to make everybody happy all the time. We're going to do our best. And then the other question is just to remind people, and I'm not trying to lead the answer, but I'm just trying to, I'm looking at my notes of things I've written down. You are going to replant trees. I think sometimes I wake up in the morning, I'm like, where are all the trees? And I remember that you're going to replant them, but it is, I, it's totally understandable for people in the neighborhood to see that it's a different look for that space. So I, I do think the more you can remind people that you will replant and you have plans, I, I think that's important for the neighborhood to know and for us to hold you guys accountable on that front too. Yeah, yeah. And I wish it could all happen, you know, in two weeks, but these things take time to do, so. There's um, a couple more questions about uh, 
what would happen with AstroTurf with runoff and storm. And, and I think those are, because we're not at that point in the construction yet, I think we would be asking you to speculate on something with, but I think I, I promise that, that we'll come back to those questions. I'm saving the chat um, and we'll make sure that we come back to those questions um, in the future. Um, and then the uh, one more comment from Anne Sutherland, and I'm going to wrap it up because we have two minutes and remind everybody when our next meeting is. But um, we'll, um, I'm not saying it's too early to consider the AstroTurf question, Rachel. I said that we, it, it, we Bruce has flagged it and I have flagged it. I'm just saying, asking Trey right now what will happen if there is a certain kind of AstroTurf that then goes into the filtration system. I don't think he's prepared to answer that question right now. So that's what I meant to say. Um, Anne's question is, will Murray replant trees that are as large as the ones that were removed? That is the issue. No, those, it, that's not physically possible. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not scared to say no to that. I and mean, that's just a reality. And that may be, and I think, like you said, that's the issue. That's your point. And I, I understand that, um, you know, if they're, but we are going to make efforts to replant and come back in with trees. Um, one of the things we agree to in our agreement with the ANC is to use as mature uh, landscaping as we can, wherever we can. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, and it's been my understanding since this whole thing started that the 54 trees that were taken down were dead or dying. So the suggestion well, not, I mean, that I was, not all of them, I, I was not not all of those, hmm. but so, some of there were there were seven that were in good condition. There right. were a couple dozen that were in fair condition, and then the rest of them were, you know, dead, dying kind of condition. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just, you know, no, no, no. I just, I, I just, you know. So, I mean, suggesting to replant dead or dying trees doesn't really make a lot of sense from a practical standpoint. I, I, Rachel, that's actually not true. There, there were trees it's called a resistograph, and we resistographed a lot of those trees, which is where you do internal drilling into the tree and to assess its health. So, you know, maybe I'm getting off. I just, I saw that, and. That is, there was a lot of visual assessment, but the trees where the D dot urban forester had a question, they requested us to run a resistograph on those trees. So you went internal on the tree. And I'll, I'll just come back to this. And I'm, I apologize, Jenny. I apologize, Mike. But we're working hand in hand with district agencies on this project. And so I understand that there may be um, issues or concerns or problems, but like we didn't just go out and hire an arborist and say, hey, buddy, you know, like, tell us what we want to hear about these trees. Like DDOT has to sign off on our permit. Like that means they had to go look at the trees. Like they had to do their own assessment. So we're not out here just doing this on our own. Okay. Uh, it's 801 and I want to try to keep us to an hour. I want to thank everybody for the good questions and the tough questions and the not tough questions. All questions are good. Uh, all comments are fair. Um, as long as everybody respects each other, which everybody did tonight. Um, our next meeting is on um, April the 19th at 7 p.m. We will have uh, an RSVP form for that where people can put questions. In the meantime, you can always contact us on the, all the uh, different venues that Mike listed earlier um, in the chat. Um, and um, uh, I just want to thank everybody for taking part. Thank you to Trey, Johnny, and Stephanie for answering our questions. And we will see you guys all in a month. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Good night.